Hello everybody, System Security Engineer William Machado here today to talk to you about Tripwire's Configuration Compliance Manager and Configuration Compliance Manager Express, otherwise known as Tripwire CCM. CCM is a tool one might leverage in their everyday efforts to maintain not only a solid and consistent security posture, but also provide audit-ready reporting for your regulatory guidelines such as SOX, PCI, HIPAA, or any of the other 750 regulatory policies Tripwire covers out of the box. Here you can see I have the CCM dashboard up. Now this is the typical view you might expect to see as an administrator logging into the system. This interface is customizable, meaning I can add, remove, resize, pin, or tab out panes. It really offers a high degree of customization, so that way when you log in, it makes sense to you and displays data that's relevant to your interest. Along the top, we have our menu area, used to switch from our integrity, compliance, and inventory views within the results area. Now, along the bottom left, you can see my network profiles. Network profiles are essentially network ranges that you would define in the system and then tie in with the scan configuration to say, I want to scan and discover all assets within this particular range of IPs. Essentially, these network profiles are the defined logical representation of your environment and are primarily used for discovery. Now from here, we can go in and view and edit the network ranges if needed, or we can also go in and examine the scan configurations. Now, in this example, we're looking at my discovery scan. This is a pre-built scan that comes along with many others within CCM to really help you get started off on the right foot by discovering and identifying all targets within an environment. And as you can see, there are several configuration items that can be tuned to be environment specific depending on the circumstances surrounding the environment. The scan schedule is set to run every 30 minutes by default and can be adjusted depending on discovery need. Now back up to the menu area here, we can see our inventory view is selected, and just below that all discovered assets within the defined network profile are being displayed. Now in this view here, we can see a couple of operational elements. The host up column will show green if a host was online during the previous scan, red if it goes offline, IP, host name, OS type, and again we can customize and define what type of information is displayed and where depending on what you want to see. Along the top left, we have our asset groups. This is where you'll define logical group assignments for your different asset types. For example, here I have my lab environment with the rule to auto assign assets within my lab to this group. This allows me to come in here and say, all right, now that I've discovered my assets down here, I want to apply my compliance checks to these assets here. This is useful if you have multiple network profiles and want to apply specific rules to a broad set of assets throughout your organization. So as you can imagine, this would allow for some very targeted and customized scan configurations. So now we can see where we've defined our network profile, discovered and auto-assigned all lab assets to my lab group, then assigned compliance scan configurations to this group. So this way, in my inventory view, I can come in here and see details about those assets, such as operating system service pack level, group, user group assignments, registry keys, installed software and services, and many other system elements. Now, what this inventory allows us to do is build out these dynamic searches. Dynamic searches are queries you can run against your environment to say, do any of the systems in my environment contain data exfiltration software, such as Dropbox? Or do any of the systems in my environment have a specific KB installed? Which systems do Steve or Jerry have access to locally? Or from an IT operational standpoint, perhaps I'd like to say, show me all the systems that have low disk space, and I can begin to take a proactive approach to managing my environment. Back in our menu area, if we switch to our changes view, we can then begin to track and identify change details across all our assets. So in this example, you can see where we identified a new suspiciously named file being added to one of our critical systems. CCM quickly alerts me, and quickly I'm able to get in there and remove the threat before it can do any harm to my system. Jumping over to our compliance view, we can see our overall system hardening state per asset, as well as some other relevant details for that asset. From here, we might examine the asset in greater detail. So for example, I can see Empire has some configuration policies applied, one of which is related to NIST hardening guidelines. Further down, we can see each sub-requirement of NIST, then continuing into the specific subsection and down to the specific test being evaluated against that asset. In this example, we can see for NIST 853 subsection IA 5.1, the minimum password length should be greater than or equal to 14 characters. 
Here we can see the attribute we're evaluating on the system is the minimum password length, that it does exist, and that the minimum password length is greater than or equal to 14 characters. Just beside that, we can identify the actual value set on the system. Here it's set to 7, resulting in a failure. Now how do we bring this system back into compliance? Switch over to our remediation tab, do these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 things, and the system will become compliant back up to, in this case, NIST standards. We can then quickly reevaluate the condition for immediate updated results, or just wait for the next scheduled task to run and update automatically. I hope you enjoyed the demo today of Tripwire CCM, Tripwire CCM Express. Should you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to your account manager. Thank you.